Okay, so it's May 2nd, 2024. We are entering peak severe weather season here, and boy, is that going to be quite evident by the time we get to the end of this video because things are going to get even more active. Even after the period of activity that we've been seeing across the U.S. here, I don't think we're anywhere close to being done with this pretty crazy year for severe weather. This is a current look at the satellite across North America over into the Atlantic Ocean. You can see, once again, we've got another one of those systems exiting here that caused a bunch of problems with tornadoes and hail in the plains over the past couple of days and now it's just causing general thunderstorms as it moves off into the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, and the Deep South. At the tail end of that system later today, we are going to have a kind of reconvection of some new thunderstorms down here in Texas and we do have a slight risk of severe weather associated with that. That's mainly going to be driven by a hail risk. The tornado risk is pretty low, but it's there. Hail and wind is going to be possible also all the way up past Missouri into Wisconsin, maybe a little bit of Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan as well. Severe weather threat's going to die out as that moves farther to the east tomorrow, but we are going to have a chance of general thunderstorms as far east as West Virginia, Virginia, and Georgia. But once again, we are going to have a re-sparking up of some storms back here in the plains, just off the front range here where we could see some hail and wind. Saturday, May 4th, looks like the most quiet day that we've seen in a long time. And also, probably Saturday and Sunday are going to be the most quiet days that we have for quite some time as severe weather is going to be moving back in after this. Before we talk about that though, let's go ahead and take a look at the simulated radar for later today. Here's those general thunderstorms up there in Missouri, Illinois, moving up into Wisconsin. These are going to cause some lightning, some thunder, some heavy rain, maybe some small hail and gusty winds. The real severe weather threat today is going to pop up back here in central Texas, south of Wichita Falls, north of Abilene. Right in there, we're going to have a cluster of supercells form that could have a brief tornado potential and then mostly just a big hail and wind threat before they fizzle out by the time we get into the early morning hours on Friday. And then as we go deeper in the Friday, go ahead and look at this cold air mass here that's kind of dipping in to parts of Montana and Wyoming. That is going to meet up with some very warm, moist air out here in the plains and convect another big line of thunderstorms from Texas all the way up into Nebraska. There is going to be a little bit of a tornado threat with these storms, but it's going to be really minimal and also very brief. And then that northern mode there is mostly going to be a linear damaging wind threat as we go into the early morning hours on Saturday. And then as we go deeper into Saturday, we are going to have a chance once again for some more severe weather back here in the plains. And then maybe Sunday, we're not going to have much of any severe weather anywhere at all. But once again, that's going to be the last time that we're going to be able to say that for quite some time. Let's start looking deeper into the future here so we can see the pattern that's developing. First of all, our jet stream is pretty high. It's up here along the northern part of the United States. That's allowing for a lot of warm air to compile down here in the south. In fact, it's going to get hot the farther south you go. I think we've got excessive heat warnings out for places in Texas and Louisiana. It's going to be hot. It's going to feel like the middle of summer for a lot of us over the next little bit, especially the farther south you go. But all of that heat energy is going to be building up and kind of interacting with little disturbances that ride the jet stream here. And then of course behind that we've got little pockets of cooler air up here that just add to that unstable environment that we're going to be having. So this little divot is going to be one that causes some severe weather. We just looked at the result of that. We've got another tiny little divot here that's going to be responsible for our storms on Saturday, but we've got mostly zonal flow across the vast majority of the United States until we get into next week. So here we go. Look at this. You see the big bowling ball trough over here on the West Coast on Sunday. I'm going to move my camera so you can really see what's going on here. We also have the subtropical jet down here moving across Mexico. Watch what happens as we go into Monday. Some of that moisture from the Pacific Ocean is going to get caught up in our big trough here, and we're going to see an amplification of a negatively tilted trough that is actually a lot more intense than anything we've seen here recently, and this is going to be the troublemaker that causes our next severe weather outbreak. Monday, May 6th at 2 p.m., we're going to have a really strong flow from the south, bringing up Gulf of Mexico and Pacific moisture into a warm sector where a cooler area of air aloft is going to ram into that. There's going to be lots of wind shear here. This is another textbook plain severe weather system that will likely cause tornadoes, hail, and damaging winds anywhere from Nebraska all the way down to Texas. And notice how as I go into the future, that trough sticks around and there's actually little bitty disturbances inside this trough that are going to spark their own severe weather systems within the larger severe weather system that last well into Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe even into Thursday and Friday of next week as we have a really interesting situation here where all of that warm air energy is going to be squeezed down to the south by some cool air and as that fight is happening, lots of thunderstorms are going to be happening in the middle. You can see this very clearly on our simulated light 
lightning model here. This shows us where lightning strikes are going to be possible in the future. Notice how as we go into Sunday, we are going to have some scattered showers and thunderstorms out there. But on Monday, you can see the result of that big trough over here in the West Coast. We're going to have a bunch of storms popping up over here in the plains over towards the Midwest. That's going to be a prolific severe weather maker there. And then that's going to be sticking with us through Tuesday morning. And then as we go into Tuesday afternoon, we get a reconvection of some new storms, maybe farther east over here. And then it doesn't even stop on Wednesday. We have more severe weather possible here. It is going to be an all out severe weather frenzy, I think, starting in the plains and then slowly but surely turning into a Ohio Valley, Midwest and southeastern thing as we go later into the week next week. Storm Prediction Center is seeing this same threat. So they've got a slight risk of severe weather on Monday, May 6th for that area where we think storms are going to pop off to the east of our big trough that's coming in. And then if you guys remember, we looked at this CSU AI model before the last severe weather outbreak, and it did really good even four, five, six days out. Now here we are on day five. The CSU model is once again painting high probabilities for severe weather over here in Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri. That moves a little bit farther to the east, just like we saw on the models there. As we go into May 8th, check out May 9th. Maybe some significant severe weather for the Ohio Valley here, but there's a huge zone where thunderstorms are going to be possible, and we'll nail this down a little bit more specifically as we get closer. But look, all the way out on May 10th, we are getting a signal for maybe some significant severe weather for a lot of people in the eastern U.S., maybe all the way over to the east coast. So our prolific severe weather year is going to continue, and it's not just going to keep impacting the plains in the upper Midwest. I think the Ohio Valley and maybe even a little bit of the Mid-Atlantic and eastern part of the United States is going to get in on the action here too as we go towards the middle of May. As always, when we have the threat for severe weather coming in, I like to remind everybody about these things. We've got NOAA weather alert radios on our website, shopryanhall.com. There's a link at the top of the description. It'll help us out so much if you buy one of these from us and we'll ship it out to you. And basically what you're going to have in your home is a smoke detector for tornadoes, severe weather, and flooding. You can plug this thing up and put batteries in it and sleep soundly knowing that it's going to wake you up if there's a tornado warning. I've got one of these in pretty much every room of my house, just like I would a carbon monoxide or smoke detector. And these things are responsible for saving countless lives over the past several years as they are your number one line of defense against severe weather. They're going to work a lot of times, even if the power goes out, if cell service goes out, they run off of a proprietary signal from the National Weather Service and they can run off batteries. And they're also programmable. So if you live on top of a mountain and you don't care about flood warnings, you can make that go off and that's not going to wake you up in the middle of the night. These things are available on my website, shopryanhall.com. It really helps us out if you buy them from us. Thank you so much for the support. We will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.